Hello, BBPC family. We are approaching the end of our midweek Bible study in James. We are now in um, the be- toward the beginning, middle of chapter five. James chapter five, verses seven to twelve. It's always good, as usual, to get to know the pretext, the text before uh, the current passage at hand. So, um, a recap of uh, the end of chapter four and also the beginning of chapter five. Uh, James was uh, warning the believers at the end of chapter 4 against uh, worldliness, the ways of the flesh. And then subsequently at the beginning of chapter 5, James was condemning the rich because they've been shortchanging and oppressing their hard workers. Uh, They were living in self-indulgence and uh, they also boasted about uh, their future success. And some of these hard workers are likely um, Christians. Um, Yeah. So this leads to today's uh, verses in chapter 5, verses 7 to 12. Let me go ahead and read them in the ESV. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, Do not swear, either by heaven, or by earth, or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes, and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. So this current passage, it actually contrasts the previous sections. Um, Instead of being worldly, or like the rich who oppress, uh, James exhorts the believers to be patient. He used the imagery of a farmer uh, that is waiting for harvest time, for the fruits and the crops, to come after the seasonal rains and also uh, to wait upon the Lord's return to have that patience why because uh, when the Lord returns he will actually vindicate those that are oppressed those that are persecuted uh, similar to the believers of that time and the Lord will reward the faithful in spiritual and even uh, physical ways in the new creation so brothers and sisters um, going through trials and temptations It can cause us to grumble against one another. This is what James uh, warned them not to do. Uh, We're reminded that the Lord is the only righteous judge. So we need to recognize that we are held accountable to him. And it's not our place really to pass judgment on our fellow brothers and sisters. There is that tendency when we're under stress, when we're facing tribulation, uh, to do so. Uh, This is uh, found in verse 9. And uh, to... Endure in the midst of suffering, James is exhorting us. Uh, he used the example of the Old Testament prophets and also Job. We find this in verses 10 to 11. This reminds us of our current times uh, in a different way, maybe not persecution per se, but really enduring in the midst of uh, the pandemic situation. It's been prolonged. It's been about a year uh, that we've been um, kind of um, persevering through the situation with uh, limited Uh, mobility activity um, being home most of the time it could uh, cause stress and pressures that's been building up so we are uh, called uh, even in our current situation to endure uh, to to have patience um, till this pandemic uh, tides over and we we we're not sure when that will be but it'll at least be some while and James uh, mentions in verse 11 the first part He says, blessed are those who remain steadfast in the face of suffering, those who endure with patience upon the Lord. Uh, Does this sound quite familiar to you? Blessed are those who remain steadfast in the face of suffering. Uh, It certainly brings to my mind the Beatitudes, which are in Matthew chapter 5 as part of the Sermon on the Mount. You know, it talks about blessed be the poor, blessed are the persecuted, uh, blessed are the meek. Um, This is the way of Christians. This is the way believers are. This is very countercultural, opposed to the worldly ways that's mentioned toward the end of chapter 4. 
And another encouragement when we wait upon the Lord's return is that we can lean into the Lord's compassion and mercy, this in spite of suffering we might be facing. Uh, this is found toward the end of uh, verse 11. It says, And you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. There is purpose even in our suffering, in our tribulations, in enduring um, challenges that we're facing. We can trust and wait upon the Lord in that ultimately He is compassionate and merciful. Now verse 12 might seem a bit out of place. Uh, some scholars think it closes off this section. Others uh, think that it opens up the next few verses uh, toward the end of chapter 5. Uh, regardless, it, I think it has time to both. Um, as uh, James has been mentioning a lot about speech throughout uh, his letter, um, in verse 12, it's in essence he's saying that godliness does not need to be boasted. Um, it is uh, Godliness ought to be shown with quiet humility. So uh, thus as believers, uh, there's no need to swear by oath, you know, by heaven or the earth. In other words, uh, to swear, uh, swear, swear to God, you know, people say, I swear to God. Just simply let our yes be yes and our no be no. In other, uh, in other words, um, just let our let our actions show. We don't have to say uh, swear by an oath, but per se. Uh, this reminds us again of Jesus's teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, a uh, little bit later in chapter five. Uh, James is following very closely Jesus's teaching. This is found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to 37. Let me just flip there. Matthew chapter 33. Sorry, excuse me. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to 37. You'll, you'll see a lot of similarity. So here it is. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So James here is not exhorting the believers anything new. He's following the teachings of uh, Jesus Christ. So um, now bringing it to our lives, um, you know, how can we endure the various uh, challenges that we're facing? Uh, for example, yeah, the current pandemic situation. I myself have um, more recently, f um, yeah, realized the accumulated stress and pressures it's been giving myself and my family. Or uh, how to endure temptations uh, in this time. Um, Temptations to just go our own way, our fleshly ways, um, and perhaps also rec and what can help us is to recognize the reality that we'll be held accountable for all our deeds when Christ returns. We're reminded of a holy God that expects us uh, to be Christ-like. So thank God that when we stumble and fall, we can repent, we can renew ourselves, and uh, be right with God and others. Also, we have the hope. Uh, as mentioned earlier, of heavenly rewards we'll receive after Christ returns. So um, we don't have to be envious. For example, uh, that's alluded to these passages. Uh, for those that are rich, uh, that have a lot of material possessions, we, we realize that that's fleeting. It only brings temporary pleasures. But what's uh, even greater is um, eternal rewards that we receive, spiritual blessings that we have partially now, but in full in the new creation. And not only that, there will be perfect harmony in the new creation, uh, harmonious relationships between God and others. And I think then we'll no longer even be envying, envying what other people have. Um, yes, so um, in terms of different contexts in our lives, uh, firstly, the workplace. Um, I wonder if some of us uh, are unfairly treated by your uh, supervisor or boss. Perhaps uh, some of you who are managers or um, um, high-level directors, you have to manage with difficult uh, situations or subordinates. How might this uh, passage encourage you to endure with patience and not to uh, grumble or complain? What about our family situations? Um, 
some of you might be newer Christians coming from non-Christian families, you might be facing a lot of um, challenges and, and even persecution per se from your non-Christian family for having come to Christ. Um, how can this passage encourage you to persevere in your faith, to show uh, your love um, in Christ, your poverty in spirit that might be a testimony uh, to your family and that might be unhappy that you've come to Christ. Um, or others of you that might be experiencing um, a lot of tension with family in light of pressures, added pressures with work from home situations, um, with pandemic restrictions. Some of us are uh, struggling with uh, longer term health issues. Uh, it's very challenging. Sometimes um, we, 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 we of course want to pray and hope for complete healing, but at the same time in reality, we know that our health likely will not improve. And uh, as we age, we'll, we'll, uh, our health uh, will de deteriorate. How can we persevere in light of uh, our health issues, especially with the encouragement from these verses? So I, I pray that um, in these difficult situations, we still can be encouraged because we have a Lord who's gone through suffering himself, who can relate to us. Not only that, um, we're reminded of the rewards that are to come, spiritual blessings, and really ultimately our the way we manage and navigate through uh, challenging circumstances really can bring wisdom witness uh, to a watching world. Um, yes, it can speak volumes. Let me go ahead and close uh, the midweek devotion and Bible study in prayer. Uh, before I do so, uh, there are questions that um, are below this video. Uh, I encourage you to kind of look through them, to reflect, um, and we can uh, be encouraged from these few words from James. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Christian worldview. It is real. It, it speaks of sin and the effects of sin and the suffering we face in this world. It reminds us of our own fleshly nature that is not holy. Uh, we thank you that through your Son, Jesus Christ, um, you provided the means, the power of your Spirit to help us to uh, progressively and uh, to transform towards Christ's likeness. We recognize we are uh, broken vessels, works in progress, but we thank you that we can um, continue to trust in your works that you've began, that you will uh, bring us to completion uh, upon Christ's return. So in light of this, we can be encouraged in the face of um, temptations, in terms of uh, trials and sufferings, that we can be molded in Christ's likeness. We don't have to be like the world. We don't have to act based on emotions, based on uh, our own ways, our own logic. Help us to abide in your spirit, to allow your spirit to have its way in us mm, so that we can uh, glorify the name of Christ. We thank you for your word in these verses. May your word um, not just retain in our heads, but um, marinate in our hearts, that it becomes not only attitude, but it becomes the way we um, think, the way we we act the way we respond, the way we relate to people. We give you thanks for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week ahead.